is how's it going? It's Russell Matthews here, and I'm here with another CRB update. The CRA, or the Canada Revenue Agency, just updated their website with a boatload of new information on CRB. Most of the information we've got over the past days is still pretty accurate, but you're going to want to stay tuned because there's a whole bunch of information that has sort of slightly changed, so you're going to want to know exactly what's happening. Since they just updated it with so much more detail, today we're going to go through all of it on a surface level and talk about the things that have changed. The amount you're going to receive has changed a little bit, the frequency in which you're going to be getting that money has changed a little bit, and third, when you're actually going to receive it and what periods you can apply for has changed a little bit. So let's take Take a look. But before we dive in head first, if you're new to the channel, hey, how's it going? It's nice to meet you. My name is Russell Matthews and I post videos about business and finance and investing and a little bit about real estate and a lot about personal finance and how people can set themselves up to live a better future. If any of that sounds remotely interesting to you, make sure to click that subscribe button and you can follow along with us. If you want to stay up to date with everything that has to do with the CRB, make sure that you hit that notification bell too, because over the next couple days, we're going to dive into some of the specific sections and go over exactly exactly every little detail of it. I want to make sure that everybody's questions get 100% answered, so make sure that you're checking back here to follow along. With that said, let's dive into the juicy new details. The info that we're going to be going over today is found on the CRA website, so you can just go to Google real quick and just type that in, and if you want to follow along, you can do so there. Also, a link to the web page is down there in the description of this video. Okay, so we're going to start with this first section, and that's who can apply, and I'm seeing something right off the bat here, and that looks a little bit different. So right away, we're seeing a small change here, whereas with the CERB, you you were given all of your money and then you're going to be taxed at tax time. Right now it's saying that per two week period, I guess we're going with two week periods now, you're going to only get $900 because they're withholding 10% tax automatically. To get specific, it says if you're eligible for the Canada Recovery Benefit, CRB, you can receive $1,000, $900 after tax withheld for a two week period. It makes sense. You might be bummed that you're not actually seeing the full thousand dollars in your account. I mean, four digits is always more exciting than three, but all in around, I think this is a good decision for Canadians. With all the economic uncertainty these days, I think the last thing Canadians want is to be slammed with a huge tax bill come tax time. And I think the government is sort of looking out for us in that way, because if times are tight, you might overspend and not have the money to pay your taxes, which can snowball into an even bigger problem for you. So all around, I think it's a pretty good thing. Next up, we've got eligibility criteria. So you've got to be eligible for all of these points in order to get CERB. So the first one, you've got to make sure that you weren't working for reasons related to COVID. You had 50% reduction in your average weekly income compared to the previous year due to COVID. We're going to uh, get back to that. And um, you didn't apply for any of these other benefits. So those benefits include the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit, Caregiving Benefit, Short-Term Disability, Workers' Comp, EI or Quebec Parental Insurance Plan. You also cannot be eligible for EI benefits. We went over this in a previous video, but if you're eligible for EI, you're not eligible for CRB. If you signed up for CERB initially with Service Canada, you'll be automatically moved over to EI, but if you signed up with the CRA for CERB and now you're eligible for EI because they've expanded the boundaries for who can qualify, you're going to have to go over to Service Canada and enter all your information there to make sure you're getting your EI on time. You also must reside in Canada. You have to be present in Canada. Okay, not sure what that means. You're at least 15 years old, you have a SIN number, and you earned at least $5,000 before deductions last year. That little bit about you were present in Canada doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, so I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more, but it seems pretty general. Next up, it says you have not quit your job or reduced your hours voluntarily on or after September 27th, 2020. That's big that they gave us that date. I'll go more into that in a future video, but that's important for the people who quit their job because their employers were making them work even though they were worried about COVID. Um, so people who quit their job before they knew about these, uh, these requirements, it seems like you might be safe. Here it says you were seeking work during the period either as an employee or in self-employment. Next up, it says you have not turned down reasonable work in the period you're applying for and you are not incarcerated in a prison or other institution. So again, these are the broad points. So we're going to dive more deeply into them in the days to come, but I just wanted to give you a general overview on what it takes to qualify. So here's something pretty interesting. It says that they're going to verify your eligibility. So the CRA is going to make sure that it's all good and that you haven't fraudulently been applying for the benefit. If they find that you've been cheating the system, it says there's going to be some penalties, maybe jail time. 
And look at that, they're even getting us to snitch on each other. Uh, it's probably a good thing. The next page we're gonna look at is how much you can get. So this is gonna determine how many periods there are, how much money you're gonna get per month. Probably gonna talk a little bit about that 10% tax withhold too. So it looks like we have a quick recap here. They're just saying $1,000 per two week period, um, but not $1,000 because they're gonna withhold 10% tax. So you're gonna get $900 per two week period for a total of 1,800 bucks per month. Here's an interesting point. This is saying there's gonna be an impact on your taxes. The 10% might not be all the taxes you need, so you might need to pay some more on top of that. The good thing is the CRA is trying to make it easy because it sounds like they're going to mail you a slip that tells you exactly how much you got from CERB and how much you got from a CRB or the other benefits. So you're going to know how much you collected and potentially how much you owe, depending on what tax bracket you're in. This next section is something that I think is pretty good for the bill, and it's about how you are going to need to pay back some of the money if you make above a certain amount. We got into it a little bit in the last video of some examples Example. So you might want to check that out right here. We have a little section in there. It's about in the middle of the video. So you can check that out for an example to see how to calculate this. In basic terms, you're going to have to reimburse half of a dollar for every dollar you make over a $38,000 limit on your income tax return. Some basic points about this, you're not going to need to include the benefit money that you receive. That's only money that you make over and above the $38,000 uh, that you make only at your job, not from a benefit. Very soon, I'm gonna release a video on the nitty gritty on how to calculate this stuff in a bunch of different examples. So hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for that so you'll know exactly how to calculate if you're going to need to pay back any of this money based on how much you work and how much you make. The next thing we're going to talk about is eligibility periods. And these are the two week segments of the month where you're going to have to re-qualify for these benefits. Now, depending on how you're working and what's happening in your life, you could go back and forth between qualifying or not. So the CRB doesn't want to send you money every single month automatically because things could change and you could forget to update it. That means every single two week period, you're gonna to have to go back and click yes. Yes, yes, I want to accept my money. Or no, if now you're not eligible. The most interesting point here is that the 13 periods do not have to be taken consecutively. You'll see here it says it can go anywhere between September 27th, 2020 and September 25th, 2021. So you have 26 weeks out of the year where you can apply for this and get it. Uh, so you're going to have to make it stretch for about a year now. Depending on if you're working or not, people might want to uh, sort of strategize when they take it. Maybe take it for one two-week period, then the second two-week period, don't take it, because then you're going to get $1,000 per month every single month. Or I guess with the tax withhold, you're going to get $900 every month. So if you're working and you just need to supplement your income, that could be a good strategy for you. But on the other hand, if you're out of work right now and you really need the money, it's okay to apply for every single period with hopes that you're going to be able to make something work half a year from now. And now we finally have some information on when that first period actually is and when you're going to be able to get your money. The first period is September 27th to October 10th, so that's going to be retroactive. Once you apply, you should be able to immediately get this money into your account within one or two days. I'm glad that they started this back then because this is when the bill was actually supposed to be through if there weren't all the delays that we've talked about in previous videos and the prorogation of parliament and all of this. So I'm glad that they're making it retroactive. As of right now, all signs point to the opening of these applications being on October 12th, which is a day after the first period. So theoretically, you should be able to apply for two periods at once on October 12th. So if you're trying to budget your money, you should be able to expect around $1,800 around the 14th or 15th of October. That should give you enough time to get the money in your account so long as you're already ready to apply. If you want to make sure that you've already done the steps that you can now so that it's as quick as possible once those applications open up, check out this video right here where I walk through how you can make a MyCRA account and apply for the CRB and all the related benefits. This next section is going over whether or not you're actually ready to apply. So this is basically Basically, the video I was just talking about that you can follow along there, but we're going to go over it quickly here now too. You want to make sure that you're already registered with the CRA and you're going to want to set up direct deposit so that money can go straight to your bank account. And also you're going to want to make sure that it's not impacting any of your social assistance benefits if you're getting those right now. And here's an interesting detail. It says applications not open. Details about when and how you can apply will be available on October 12th, 2020. Hmm. Maybe I'm just a pessimist, but 
this is a little bit concerning because it says that you only have the details on when you can apply on October 12th. I'm hoping that they'll just open up the floodgates and let everybody apply on that day, but they've given themselves the wiggle room to say, hey, we didn't actually say you could apply on that day, so here's hoping that it's actually the application day on October 12th. Now we get back to a page here which just says stuff that we've already learned, which is you have to reapply every two weeks, keep looking for work, make sure you're still eligible, reapply, you gotta click that button every two weeks, and it also says when you can expect your payment. If you're going with direct deposit, it should be three to five business days. And if you're going by mail, it'll be 10 to 12 business days. Again, if that October 12th date is correct and that's when we can all apply, then you're going to be looking at October 15th at the latest if you got direct deposit. So make sure you go set up that direct deposit. Right now, we're not 100% sure that you're going to be able to get two periods at once for that first application. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because as soon as we know how much money you're going to be potentially getting on October 15th, you're gonna be the first one to know about it from me. The last little update on the website just tells you how you can repay the CRB if you later find that you're not eligible. But there's one interesting little tidbit on that page that's sort of going to warn you about CRB repayment plan fraud. And right here they say recognize repayment scams. And you can check out the link right here to protect yourself against fraud. I'm so glad they included this on the webpage because there was a lot of Canadian emergency response benefit fraud that was going on where people were getting money that wasn't theirs. People were being asked to repay and then they sent that money to a scammer. So absolutely awful. The worst part is they tend to target the elderly. So if you have any older parents or grandparents, make sure that you get in touch with them and say, hey, I just want to talk to you a little bit about this to make sure you don't get scammed. That pretty much wraps up the boatload of new information that the CRA has given us. I love it because now we're able to get specific. There's still a couple question marks though. Based on some of the comments I've gotten in the past, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are pretty pissed if they can't expect their money there at least on October 15th. If they end up announcing that's only the day where they have details about how you apply or what day you apply, I could see some pretty angry people out there. But let me know what you think. Do you trust the government that they're going to be able to actually let you apply on these days that we're all expecting? Or are they just going to drag the carrot further, further, further away from us and say, hey, it's coming, it's coming, apply a little later. What do you think? Do you trust them or no? Let me know down in the comments. And if you found this video at all helpful, make sure to send it off to a friend, share it with anybody who needs this information because like I said before, there's so much misinformation that's going around out there. Nobody really knows what's going on. So I want everybody to have as much accurate information as possible. So send it off. And one more time, I'll ask you to hit that subscribe button because again, daily I'm coming back with these updates. Whenever anything changes, any information, whether or not we're actually going to expect it there on October 15th, you're going to hear it from me as fast as possible on this channel. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. But that does it for me, folks. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you next time.